Hi, we're here with David Turrell. Now, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't have heard of you, David. Probably not. Because you're behind the camera generally. Absolutely. So you have a passion for Christian media. Mm, I, have, I have a passion for media yeah. and uh, Christians in media, for sure. So to be clear, Christian media isn't about someone standing behind a pulpit and preaching. Oh, absolutely not. Um, I actually think Jesus was one of the best communicators in the world. And yeah. there's a lot we can learn from how Jesus communicated into the, into the culture of the day. And basically he told great stories yes. very well. Mm -hmm. What I see a lot in Christian media is some great preachers and some great singing and some great sound and, and production values and all that, which is all great. But I don't think that often translates into great media. I think great media is actually about stories. I think so, because you, you have, we've got to grab people and we've got to hold them mm, and mm. invite them into our world. Absolutely. And, you know, that's, I, I guess, the heart of what we do, because we're inviting you, the viewer, into the lounge room here to sit and have a chat with us. Mm. And so, suing the devil, we can't go past that. Okay. So that, that was a, a feature film. Yep, it was, it, was, it was the first Christian full-length feature film produced in Australia for 100 years. So the first feature film ever in the world was actually produced in Australia. It was by the Salvation Army, and that mm. was Christian. And then nobody did anything for 100 years. So Suing the Devil was the first one produced. Yeah. Yeah. So um, God tricked me into Suing the Devil. I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to be the <laughs> producer. Um, I, went, I was over in the United States, and I met up with a guy called Tim Che, who was the director of five... Christian movies mm -hmm. and um, just by accident I came across a flyer, sat down with Tim, we went out to dinner, he said he'd really like to produce a movie in Australia so I said oh, I was heading up Christian Media Australia at the time mm -hmm. so uh, I said look I can give you a hand, I can give you some contacts and I know some people have got some money and stuff like that mm -hmm. and next thing I knew I was the producer of the film. Yeah, <laughs> so I was yeah. a, you, know, you know how you have a bucket list and, and uh, it wasn't on my bucket list to produce a feature film. But now I've got um, um, uh, producer credits on three fi feature films, uh, yeah. David and Goliath, Final, and Suing the Devil, as well as a TV series. Yeah. So, yeah, but I didn't intend to do any of that. <laughs> 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 Funny, that. <laughs> yeah, well, God does accidentally. Mm, that's right. <laughs> Just because we're available. That's, mm, yeah. that's a really yeah. good thing. All you've got to do is not say no. It's, it's easy in your Christian walk. Yeah. If you say, people, people uh, in fact, I love the saying, uh, Christians don't tell lies, they sing them. You know, we say, God, anything that you want me to do, I'll do it. I and surrender then, uh, all. Yeah, I surrender, <laughs> yeah. And then he taps you on the shoulder, says, well, you know, I'd like you to go and do this. You go, really? Yeah. So most of us say no. A lot of us say no when they, yeah. I'm stupid. So anything God puts in front of me, I go, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Well, yeah, and, and that's, that's our philosophy mm. that you just say yes and work out how you're going to do it later. Yeah, that's right. So, because we live in the realm of the miraculous, the mm. possibility mm -hmm. of God. So, mm. He's able. Mm. We may not kind of see the path straight just yet, but He is indeed able. So, for those watching who don't understand how media works, mm. what is a producer? Um, I like to think of it as like the CEO of the uh, of the organisation. So you've got the producer who basically, I asked Tim Jay, the director of the movie, I said to Tim, what really is the producer? And he said, oh, well, if you win an award, the producer's the guy who gets to go up and collect it. So he's, a, he's like the manager of the whole thing, mm. pulls everything together, he produces it. Uh, the, um, the director is like the creative person behind it and makes it, tells the story uh, mm. to the camera. Mm. So uh, a good producer and director work well with each other mm. in that sense. So a producer is really a key person mm. in the media. Yeah. You know, because I guess our focus is always on the person in front of the camera. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And as it should be. But <laughs> the person behind the camera is actually the one making it all right. happen. And so wh from your observation, how do you see us tracking in terms of media? 
I, I guess Christian Christian, media. Christian's tracking in terms of media. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you think about Star Wars, which mm -hmm. is a fairly topical thing to think about at the moment, um, the Disney people went out and just with the franchise, they spent four billion dollars mm -hmm. on Star Wars. Um, my understanding is that today it's made about six billion dollars already on the first movie. They, mm -hmm. they paid four billion for the whole franchise. Mm -hmm. um, and what did they do? They told a really, really good story. I mean, they told a great story. They had lots of money to shoot it with. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that, is that Christian media is often the poor cousin. And so we don't necessarily go for great stories. We go for safe stories. Safe stories are, um, are, are an interesting thing. Um, it's almost like Christians sometimes just make another dog movie, you know, your nice <laughs> warm fuzzy dog movie and then someone goes and finds God in the end of it and isn't the world just a wonderful place? Well, um, I don't quite think it's like that. A lot of my friends don't have that experience. A lot of my Christian friends don't have that experience, you know. Mm. Life is tough and if you want a serious walk with God, it's very tough. If you read the Bible, if you look at all the great heroes of the Bible, uh, a lot of those were crucified. Uh, well, not all of them crucified, two of them were crucified. Um, but um, a lot of those had major things happen to them, sicknesses come upon them, um, illness, attacks, um, vilification, and the whole bit. Uh, none of them had a, an easy life. And so why, would, why do we always tell Christian movies with, with um, it's all happy ever after? because it's not necessarily happy ever after. Eventually it's going to be great, right? And eventually eternity is going to be fantastic, but the journey is actually quite tough. Yeah, I, I guess, you see, I, my own personal philosophy is it's as tough as we want to see it as. Mm -hmm. Because I think for all those Bible heroes, if we were to, to ask them at the time, they wouldn't have probably thought it was as tough as what we look at it and think it was. It was just, well, this is what I'm doing. Oh, well, that's right. They, 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 they were also silly enough to say yes. If you don't say no and you're willing to go through anything, then you'll, you'll, you, you won't realise you look back. You won't have a dull life. Through. No, no, no. It won't be, <laughs> won't be boring. That's what my wife keeps saying. David, we don't have a boring life. And I go, well, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, why would you want to have a boring life? Mm, absolutely. We... we you know, life is meant to be exciting and interesting. So, coming back to the Star Wars thing, yep. you know, th there there have been um, movies written by well, uh, uh, maybe the screenplays not so much, but but the original stories, like the the Narnia series and the the Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. and uh, so no one would look at those and say, oh, they're Christian movies. No, but Tolkien and and C.S. Lewis were both. Christian Full men. On, absolutely. And so we, I think we're going to a subject we, we need more time. So <laughs> we're going to come back in a minute. So we're back with David Charrell and we're talking about movie stories we are. because I guess God as the creator of the universe is not short of a few ideas. No, that's right. Yeah. So therefore, why do we feel we must make stories that present him as boring and obvious? Well, I think we make a lot of safe stories. I think, I mean, there's a lot of risk in making a movie. Uh, you know, a cheapish movie is about $2 million. So um, that's a lot of risk. And so if you're a Christian and you've got all this money from people, then you'll make a safe story. Uh, in fact, um, um, what they wanted in the end, they want people to watch it, they want people to buy the DVD, talk about it, mm. and all that. Um, I think the, the best type of stories are the ones that aren't obviously Christian, yes. but there is another meaning to them. There is something much deeper. When you dig mm. into it, it's mm. like it's like discovering. I mean, God talks about it. It's the it's the it's the pleasure of a king to actually find the secrets of God. That's God right. hides things from the kings. Uh, and I but think he, no, he doesn't hide them from us. He hides them for, for, for us. us. Yeah, for, to discover them. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So he's waiting for yeah. us to get in there and find it. Yeah. So if you watch Narnia, for example, mm. it's not. A Christian story and yeah. most people don't know that the, the lion is the lion of Judah and mm. all it's just a lion as far as the kids are concerned mm. it's like a big scary lion um, same with uh, Lord of the Rings and some mm. of the other the other great stories yeah. there's a, there's a depth if you drill into them yeah. so one of the big things that Jesus was 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 criticized for was he actually didn't tell religious stories he was telling no. stories about millstones and he was talking about stories about people who fish mm. and people mm. who did ordinary farmers, and, things, and, and, stuff, farmers yeah. and seed so 
growing yeah. and, and yeah. weeding, for example. He, yeah. he told stories about that, but then, and even his disciples didn't understand his stories. They said, can you explain this story? I haven't got a clue. Yeah. And so they discover it and they go, aha. So the aha moment mm -hmm. is the one that sticks, but the, yes. you, you present them with all the answers. It's like, okay, well, we'll go on to the next movie. Mm. You know, it's, you need the yeah. aha moment. Yeah. Mm. And I guess, People think that's the safe story to do because mm. I'll get my money back. But really, I mean, for myself, I would look at that and say, I don't need to see that. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah I, um, I, I, true confession, I don't watch a lot of Christian movies. No. I watch some because yeah. I think I actually know what's going to come. Mm. I know, and I think I already know the end of the movie. Yeah. You know? So yeah. um, I, I like gripping stories. I like reading spy stories and I like reading stuff where there's sort of all these all these double meanings. Yes. Not, 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 not dirty double meanings, you know, double meanings in, in, in the plot and the strategy and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. I love that stuff, mm. you know. Yeah, mm. my, my, my hobby is to find the killer before they do. That's right, yeah. And yes. <laughs> yeah, That's because right. you're thinking, you're engaged mm. with the story. And that was the key that Jesus had. He was engaging mm. the people. So, yeah. and he was into pop culture. Absolutely. So we need to engage mm. the audience. For sure. And so what's on the horizon for you? Um, there's some stuff I can't talk about. Um, there is a feature film in, in the plot mm -hmm. at the moment. In fact, there's two feature films that I'm currently thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also interested a lot in producing music as well. I know okay. I've got two or three albums, not personally, I've got one album myself, but uh, a couple of albums for some artists that I'm producing mm -hmm. who, again, are Christian artists, but you, you would, if you listen to the music, you wouldn't go, oh, that's a Christian artist. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like Beyonce-style music. Mm -hmm. And then as people discover what the words actually mean, mm -hmm. then it'll, mm -hmm. it'll get revealed. So I'm doing some music as well. Yeah. So, yeah, doing some of that stuff. So a bit busy. Mm, a little bit busy. Just a yeah, bit. yeah. Yeah. But but what's your passion? My passion. Mm -hmm. um, my real passion. Yeah. My, my real passion mm -hmm. is music. I'm 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 a I'm a I'm a nutcase guitarist. I just love playing music uh, and um, expressing myself through that. I write a, write a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and play a lot of stuff. So my my passion is is actually playing music, which yeah. is how I started out in media. That's like see, yeah. I always think um, God's got a sense of humour. There I was a, I was a guitarist. I was doing session work for the ABC many mm -hmm. years ago, and from that I ended up in recording studio. So I learned my recording skills from recording. Skills skills, I ended up going to a radio station, I ended up learning radio skills, I ended up managing radio stations and from radio stations I ended up producing a film. And it's just like, you know, you look back and go, I couldn't have worked that out. No, you know, you know. No. So it's all started with music and it, yeah. music's never left me, you know, it's yeah. always part of what I do. Yeah, but media, entertainment is, is all about passion mm. and mm. sometimes I, I think as Christians we're not as passionate as we should be. Mm. Absolutely. And so, you know, I think God's stirring that again, mm. that, that we would be passionate and, mm. and you know, we, we get a hold of a story and, and really wring the goodness out of it, you yeah. know, the, the whatever, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that we can touch the world in a different way, mm. so that people could see the truth mm. in, in a different way. Yeah. Well, um, I like the idea that media can actually make the uh, make the shades drop off the eyes and then open your eyes up to up to things. Yeah. I don't think it's any any mistake that uh, the enemy is called the prince of the air. Mm -hmm. um, and for those people who are in media, we're actually fighting the enemy. Like yes. it's really mm -hmm. difficult to produce anything Christian. Mm -hmm. Christians don't like putting money into it. Pe uh, Christians are very cynical about other Christian productions. And it's very and and critical. And, it's, and critical, yeah. Uh, and it's and it's very difficult. And I yeah. think that's stirred up. The enemy doesn't want us to take back the airways. I no. mean, you know, um, the one thing that can actually change culture is the media, is television and Tight. film and music. Mm. They're the three things that I'm mm. I'm involved with mm. a lot. Mm. Uh, and you work in those areas, you're going you're going to get you're going to get hammered. But greater is He. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Who is in us? So, you know. I, th I think that media and Christians involved in media is a very exciting field to be in. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Right oh, now. It's great fun. And so, I mean, I, I, I just think it's, it's, a, it's a great time to be forging ahead and encouraging others. And, and it's great to have had you here okay. to, to encourage people, you know, that, that you didn't start out even, you know, 
technologically equipped, mm. you know, apart from your guitar. That's right. Um, but now you've, you've got three films under your belt and more on the horizon. And so if you've never actually um, caught up with any of David's work, you, on the website you can, uh, we'll have links to, to your, your work. Suing so the Devil and other Suing the Devil yeah. is, um, it, it was a su surprising story. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, but you know, I, I think, but stay tuned because the next series of work I think is going to be different and more surprising. Oh, absolutely. And you know, uh, don't miss it. Watch this space. <laughs> so, thank you, David, for your time thank today. You very much. It's been excellent talking to you, and I know people have really been interested in in what you've had to say about media. Don't forget to like us on Facebook because then you can access our exclusive Facebook-only interviews. These are excerpts from much larger interviews, some you've seen on television, but these are the bits you didn't see. And so don't miss out. Like us on Facebook today. Hi, and we're chatting with Deborah Thompson. Now, Deborah is probably one of Australia's, in fact, maybe the world's, best kept secrets, because I'll just tell you a secret that Deborah's not really someone who wants to be in the spotlight. No, that's true. But she's an artist, and as you can see, some of her art here, and she's just had an extraordinary success with yes. your art. Yes. Only painting since 2006. Yes, that's right. So, so tell us how it came about. You took it up as a hobby, or? Um, I, I started out of boredom actually. Okay. I didn't have much to do and so I thought I'll just go out in the garage and start painting and from there a friend looked at it and said they saw something on it and they saw that I had a good eye for it and mm -hmm. said you need to you know keep this up. Uh, initially I just kept doing it out of a place of enjoying music. I used to like listen to a lot of music and yeah. so it came from that place yeah. and from there I um, started donating into the Women's and Children's Hospital, into the Modbury Hospital, and then I went into the wards of the state um, in mm -hmm. Adelaide and donated over 76 paintings to the children. And I started doing identity words. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, words that were opposite to how they were feeling. Sure, yeah. yeah. So it grew from there. Yes, and then, really miraculously, after only showing your paintings in two exhibitions. Yes, that's right. And only local, not, not big deal exhibitions, yeah. just yeah. local exhibitions. You are now a nas uh, international artist. artist. Yes, that's right. So you've been in galleries in New York. Yeah, and in Bologna, Bologna Italy. Mm. And having been invited to do a solo exhibition in Manhattan in New York this year in November. Yeah. Yeah. Um, been in an Art World book, in a New York magazine, and in a book, in an, Italy, in an Italian book. Mm -hmm. um, been invited to do Vienna and Florence, so it's just snowballing. Yeah. yeah. And that really is a miracle, isn't it? Yes, definitely. For an Australian artist to be... I think for any artist to actually get that much recognition in such a short time sure. is... Um, yeah, it's miraculous. So Absolutely. It had to be God because, yeah. you know, most artists spend all their lives and don't get one big open door. Mm. So Until they're dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, even then, a lot of artists don't even get that. No, they don't. So, they don't. Yeah, and mine came out of a place of um, enjoying music and mm. just wanting to throw paint on a canvas, mm. and so it's come from a place of fun and enjoyment. Mm. So. But a real key, as we were saying before, was the fact that you were prepared to give and you still give yes I donate most of the art the art that doesn't sell I actually donate into the community so they go into retirement homes yeah. hospitals wards of the state disability sure. so and I just continually looking for places to donate it into so what yeah. doesn't sell gets donated yeah because God loves a cheerful giver yes that's all right yeah <laughs> so he, he wants to bless you but your art is really interesting because um, you were saying it's it's tactile. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not just 3D. It's sort of like 3D tactile textural, and so you can have an experience with the art. You can actually yeah. run your hands and your fingers over it, feel the paint. You know, see if it's wet because that 
you always want to know if the paint's wet and that's a desire you have to touch it yeah. but as you touch it you have an experience with it yeah. um, far greater than you actually see it's yeah. it you know than what you see in the natural so mm. and because th this comes from from your place of worship yeah to God yeah. th this there's actually a deposit of God on each one of these paintings so yes yeah. so they're, they're really an ongoing blessing to the people that either own them or have been gifted yes with that's them. right yeah yeah that's, that's right that's really really good so what's next for you what's the next uh, Manhattan in New York this year in November uh -huh. so I have a solo exhibition so um, that's a very big deal yes it is actually I've got the whole gallery and everyone's coming to meet the artist and to see the art so that is a big deal <laughs> it is a big deal and yeah. you get to go yes that's right so that, that's so exciting yeah and who knows what comes out of that yes that's because true. you can also get commissions yeah 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 so so the future for Deborah Thompson artist is extremely bright yes it is thank yeah. you yeah yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very very impressed with um, do you want to just talk a little bit about um, the, the, perhaps the, the paintings you've got here this one's called liquid gold so if we show them I hold it up yeah yeah this one's called liquid gold um, it's three shades of purple on it it's tactile textural um, and basically it was done from that place of worship in with music and yeah and I just felt to flick gold all over it and I just felt the Lord wanting to release liquid gold so and the colors and the colors are uh, they they're significant they're not just so when I paint I have uh, I don't get pictures like uh, contemporary artist does I get um, a colour, so I'll pick up purple, and purple to mean is wealth and royalty mm -hmm. and the Lord, so then I feel to put purple mm -hmm. on it, and mm -hmm. I've got three shades of purple on it. Yeah. And so the colours are releasing stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, so Absolutely. I don't say stuff, but. <laughs> <laughs> They're releasing yeah. the presence of God, and, and the uh, one at the front is. Yeah, and that one is a, an angelic wreath. Um, and it's got silver on it, which is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Yeah. White is purity, faithfulness, and holiness. And the gold, which is the glory. And it's done in a circular portal. Mm. Um, it's beautiful. So the art brings a presence into someone's house. Absolutely. And it brings peace and calming. Mm. And so depending on where the artist is at and, you know, how deep their journey is to what it actually brings and unlocks. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone at home would like to purchase a piece of your art, how would they go about that? They can contact us on the web page. Mm -hmm. It's Love Abstract Art. I think that's on the screen now. Dot Weebly dot com. Mm -hmm. And I do have an art page on Facebook as well. Okay. Which is Love Abstract Art dash yeah. Deborah Thompson. Yeah. So, um, and they can make contact that way. Yeah. It's, uh, that one's stunning. Um, so, I, and, and you do want to touch, touch it, it yes. don't you? Yes, that, you do. You actually want to feel, see that yeah. the paint's actually dry. Yeah, it's <laughs> just beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I, I just encourage you to to go onto Deborah's website, unless you can go to Manhattan and see her exhibition, which would be excellent. But go onto the website, have a look at her art, contact her, because you know artists only get more valuable, isn't it? Yes, yeah. that's right. So and my art is. Uh, not as much here in Adelaide mm. or in South Australia, mm. but actually in overseas I'm actually worth a lot more. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. And in the art world where the art is more recognised, the value of the art's gone up. Of course. And the more I get known as a name, then the more of the course. art goes up in value. Yeah. So, so now's the time. <laughs> now, now's the time to buy. Yeah. So go on the website, have a look at Deborah's art. I know that what, if you, you can purchase a piece, you will be truly blessed. But otherwise, go to one of these places, the, the Women's and Children's Hospital, and have a look at some of the work that Deborah's done.